The following is the story of how environmental protection agency regulations matter and touch our lives. In 1987, the United States adopted the Montreal Protocols. This led to EPA regulations and subsequent ban of CFC-11, a suspected major contributor of ozone depletion in the upper atmosphere. It was also a major component of the Space Shuttle's thermal protection system, more commonly known as the insulating foam on the shuttle system's external tank. A replacement for CFC-11 was dubbed HCFC-141B. This, in conjunction with other chemical compounds sprayed onto the external tank, formed the insulating layer of foam. The new formulation was found to be much more brittle and susceptible to shear forces during liftoff and supersonic transition. This resulted in 308 hits of debris on the Columbia tile system during a 1997 flight, an increase of over 700% over the older, less environmentally correct foam. Despite attempts to make the new foam work as well as the old version, NASA was unable to eliminate the threat from the brittle foam. In documentation obtained through the Freedom of Information Act, NASA requested a special exemption from the EPA for the remaining shuttle missions to use the older, safer formulation of foam on major portions of the external tank. Twice they were denied. January 16, 2003, STS-107 lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center. Approximately two minutes into the flight, a briefcase-sized piece of foam broke off the external tank and struck the reinforced carbon-carbon leading edge of the shuttle's left wing. punching an estimated 15-inch hole into the structure, leaving the internal components exposed.
Upon re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere 16 days later, the Columbia's left wing was burned off. The craft broke apart and burned up over Texas. Columbia and her crew were lost. This is how EPA regulations matter, how they touched the lives of seven astronauts and incinerated them. Thank you, EPA, for your part in this national tragedy.